Right, so good afternoon members of the press and welcome to our briefing on the status of COVID-19 in the country. This is our 636th brief. And so fellow Kenyans, on the 21st of November this year, the Cabinet Secretary for Health addressed the country through a press briefing at which he gave a number of directives relating to vaccination. It will be recalled that on that day, similar to a number of days before and since, infection rates and hospitalizations were relatively low. Our positivity rate on that day was an impressive 0.7%. And although we had 350 cases in hospital with 20 patients in ICU and 113 on supplemental oxygen, we knew our situation was not very bad. Indeed, in subsequent days, our hospital cases reduced. On December, on December 7th, for instance, cases in ICU had dropped to only two, with another 52 on supplemental oxygen across the country. Our positivity rate on the 7th of December remained at 1.6%. At the time we were issuing the directives on the need for vaccination, we expected cases to rise. And today, as we speak, 3,328 people have tested positive of the disease from a sample size of 11,197 in the last 24 hours. This puts our positivity rate at 29.7%. We were, however, confident then that if we had more of our people vaccinated, it would be possible to still manage our situation as many would have escaped severe disease despite getting infected. With the increase of infections following the onset of the Omicron variant, we still find that those who are vaccinated perform better against the disease. And this is important for us to repeat, those who are vaccinated still perform better and have better outcomes than those who are not vaccinated. Therefore, this means that all adults in the country should be vaccinated in the shortest time possible to ensure that we have as many people as possible protected from severe disease. When we look at the picture globally, the global fin figures indicate that to date we have 8.47 billion doses of vaccines that have been administered with 3.63 billion people fully vaccinated. So far, in the country, we have received 23 million doses of vaccines. And as of today, we have managed to vaccinate about 9.2 million Kenyans. We are slightly under a million less of our target of 10 million people, which we hope to attain by the end of this month. Over 5.4 million people aged 18 years and above have received the first dose. 3.7 million of those aged 18 and above are fully vaccinated. We have also managed to vaccinate 13,845 people aged between 15 to 18 years of age with Pfizer vaccine for their first dose. And so fellow Kenyans, in line with the national regulations and legislation, the Kenya government recognizes all the COVID-19 vaccines that have been approved by WHO. Our government through our regulatory agency, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, has authorized the use of the following WHO-approved vaccines. One, Pfizer Biotech. Two, Covishield and AstraZeneca AZD 1222. Janssen, developed by Johnson & Johnson. Moderna and Sinopharm and Sinovac CoronaVac, as well as Barrett Biotech BBV 152. That's the Covaxin vaccine. These vaccines are available, and we emphasize these are vaccines are available for free in over 3,000 vaccination centers throughout the country. If you want to find out a vaccination site that is nearest to you, you can get this information from the Ministry of Health website at www.health.go.ke. As part of our COVID-19 heightened containment measures, the National Emergency Response Committee on Coronavirus on the 21st of November directed that everybody seeking in-person government services should be fully vaccinated and proof of vaccination availed by the 21st of December, 2021. In public places, all persons must show proof 
of vaccination for admission, for example, into national parks, game reserves, hotels, bars, restaurants, as well as use of public transport means, including domestic flights, train, and PSVs. All visitors, tourists, and travelers from Europe must be fully vaccinated and provide proof of vaccination before entry into the country. These guidelines have therefore been developed to guide public interaction and operation at public facilities in line with the NERCC recommendations. It is important to note that these guidelines may be reviewed depending on the COVID-19 disease trends globally, but also within the country. It is important that we emphasize to you, in terms of proof of vaccination, what will be required. When you attend any organized event, be it a wedding, a funeral, receptions, organized parties, conferences, sports, trade fairs, workshops, you will be required to show proof of vaccination. Should you attend an indoor concert, theater, dance, symphony events, you will be required to show proof of vaccination. Licensed hotels, restaurants, cafes that offer table service, both indoor and patio dining, that includes liquor tasting rooms, wineries, breweries, distilleries, you will be required to show proof of vaccination. Pubs, bars, lounges, again, while visiting these facilities, you will be expected to show proof of vaccination. This includes nightclubs, casinos, movie theaters, game parks, game reserves, museums, supermarkets, shopping malls, indoor markets, banking halls, transport services, including international and domestic flights, train services, PSVs, border border and taxi. You will also be required to show proof of vaccination in all government offices and all parastatal offices. The following requirements apply with respect and above to all those events and facilities. The event organizers or the facility manager or the government or parastatal office concerned must ensure the following. One, that all protocols have been issued, that have been issued by the Ministry of Health for the prevention and control of COVID-19 have been observed. This includes, of course, hand washing, sanitizing, physical distancing, wearing of face masks, temperature checks, observance of signs and symptoms of COVID-19. All workers and service providers must have undergone COVID-19 vaccination and must possess COVID-19 vaccination certificates. All participants must provide a vaccination certificate as proof of being fully vaccinated against COVID-19. No participant, employee or service provider should be granted access into a facility if they are not in possession of a vaccination certificate. Exemptions from vaccination against COVID-19 on medical grounds may be issued by a licensed medical practitioner. Children and adolescents below the age of 15 years are exempted from this requirement. No vaccination certificates provided by a participant are to be retained within the premises or that the vaccination certificates are used for any other purpose other than for the confirmation of vaccination status. A person, including a parent, must be fully vaccinated if the person is leading, supervising, or assisting in a program that touches on children or youth or even adults on a voluntary basis, including when they receive an honorarium for that purpose. Finally, it is the sole responsibility of an event organizer, facility manager, government or parastatal office to ensure that the above requirements are met. In the event of non-compliance, action shall be taken, which may include the following, withdrawal of license of the institution and of court proceedings. Each establishment or facility shall be required to nominate or designate a person responsible for verifying vaccination certificates at all facility access points. Any person who has received his or her vaccination can access it through the Chanjo system, through the portal at health.go.ke. You can create and sign up for, create an account and you'll be able to then download your certificate from that portal. 
The vaccination certificates can be presented in hard copy or in digital format through any smart device. Each vaccination certificate must have a QR code, which then will be used to verify the details of the individual, the vaccine, the place, and the time the vaccine was administered. All persons are tasked with verification of COVID-19 vaccine certificates can download QR code scanners, and these can be used for the verification process. Upon scanning using the QR code, the verifier will be directed to the MOH portal where a copy of the bearer's vaccine certificate can be viewed and verified. The verification will be against the person's details when it comes to the ID, passport, and driving license details that were provided. Fellow Kenyans, with regard to the international travelers, our port health officers at all points of entry shall be required to verify vaccination certificates. On the other hand, all travelers must provide, and this is important, we've received many questions on this. One, proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test, valid 72 hours from the time of sample collection to the time of arrival within the country. Children below the age of five are exempted from PCR-based tests. Proof of vaccination will also be expected against COVID-19 with a WHO-approved vaccine. Children below 18 years of age are exempted from COVID-19 vaccination certificate presentation. We also require travelers to show us proof of submission of their daily health status into the Jitenge platform via star 299 hash. And then of course, travel documentation will be required as you come into the country. As we conclude, we want to state that while we know vaccines play a major role in this fight, of COVID-19 disease, they cannot replace all the other measures. And so we continue to appeal to you to strictly adhere to the containment measures. Remember to wear your masks, your face masks at all times in public places. Maintain social and physical distance. Washing of hands with soap and water and sanitizing. And of course, avoiding gatherings, be they social or political. And finally, on behalf of the Ministry of Health, on behalf of our cabinet secretary, Motai Kagwe, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And for these activities, the festive activities to have true meaning, we appeal to you to stay safe, protect yourselves and your loved ones. Thank you. Um, the directives that we've just given today are directives that are meant to protect the country, that are meant to protect the citizenry. While giving these directives, the NERCC was able to convene and review the global situation and to review the regional situation and the country situation. And most countries globally, if you look, have actually adopted the use of presentation of vaccination certificates while entry into public spaces. I myself have had the opportunity to be in a few countries and I have seen it. In Glasgow, in the just concluded COP summit, for you to gain entry into the conference, for you to gain entry into some shopping malls, you had to present the COVID-19 vaccination certificates. These measures are in place to protect you and I. Right now, the Ministry of Health, in putting down these directives through the NERCC, is invoking the Public Health Act. We have emphasized that yes, vaccination is not mandatory, but for you to be able to interact with other Kenyans, for you to be able to get the privilege of interacting and using some of these facilities, then you have to do so while protecting your fellow member, community member, by ensuring you're vaccinated. And that is the stand of the Ministry of Health. And so we encourage Kenyans to ensure that they are vaccinated. Like we've said, we've given instructions on how you can access your vaccination certificate. If you have any challenges accessing that certificate, you can reach the Ministry of Health. We will be on standby. We are not on holiday. We shall be there to facilitate these processes. Now, DG, if you could talk on the issue of surveillance. In terms of surveillance, of course, the surveillance system has been up and running since we reported our first case on, uh, in March last year. And uh, when the Omicron variant was detected in South Africa, of course, we also enhance our surveillance system. Uh, the port of entry, especially Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, because of international travel, but equally at all points of entry and also at community and facility level. And based on that, uh, we carried out genomics uh, sequencing of the 
tests that turned out positive, especially from travelers who arrived at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. For example, on 7th of this month, out of the sample sequenced, 76% were positive for the Omicron variant, 18% was Delta variant. But 10 days later, that is on the 17th of December, all the, uh, all the sample sequenced turned out to be the Omicron variant. So basically now Omicron variant is a predominant variant at literally 100%. So we are still continuing with the surveillance system and uh, it is based on that fact that of its high transmissibility due to the constellation of mutations that the variant exhibits in the S gene platform that made it be classified as a variant of concern because of increased potential for transmissibility. And that we are seeing because you have seen our numbers rise and our positivity rate now fluctuating at between 28 and literally 30%. We hope that uh, we are going to plateau soon because if you look at the past three days, on, uh, uh, on Monday it was 29.6. Yesterday it dropped a bit, 27 point something. Today is back again to 29.7, so basically 30%. We hope that we are not going to tip over 30% and maintain it at that, and that will mean that we have a saturation of the infection and it can only come downwards. But for us to be able to achieve that, we need to work to ensure that uh, we continue to comply with the non-pharmaceutical interventions and also up our game in terms of the vaccination, which my colleague will be able to speak to. Uh, but just uh, additional information, for example, today we have 15 persons admitted uh, in various critical care units in the entire republic. Out of these 15, 10 are not vaccinated at all. So that's about 67% of the population admitted in critical care are not vaccinated. Five are fully vaccinated. So uh, even without uh, an addi addi additional shot, you can see the protection accorded either with a single shot or the two shots of the vaccine in offering you close to almost 70% protection. And this is what has also been uh, uh, documented in the West. So vaccines actually work and it is our intention this particular time to call on more Kenyans to turn out for vaccination. And as we go out there during this festive season to ensure that we protect the elderly and the vulnerable one, by ensuring that they come for vaccination in case they have not been vaccinated. Then when we have any gathering of any nature, let's have outside gathering. I know the weather is a, a little bit unfriendly, but uh, if you are seated indoors, seat the elderly and vulnerable people by open windows. If it is cold, ensure that they're warmly covered in a blanket or a shawl and ensure that there's proper circulation of air. Thank you. Yes. The other question was on the vaccination strategy. From Africa CDC, uh, belatedly, because that is exactly what we have been doing. You have seen us even during the celebration to mark uh, Jamuri Day, where we had even a tent during the celebration to ensure that those who come to celebrate that important occasion, those who have not been vaccinated, are able to access the vaccine. You have seen in the train stations, at the bus stops, the border border rider sheds, in the markets, in the churches. We have gone ahead to ensure that we avail the vaccines to the people instead of using only a fixed post vaccination strategy. So we are going to the people and we'll continue to go to the people to ensure equity and no one is left behind. But my colleague will be able to add more to that. Thank you. You heard of Moonlight vaccination. They were very impressed with us. Kiamban Moranga, they do vaccination in the night using torches. So those are measures we are doing. In fact, in Kenya, we've employed as many strategies as we are able to do. And uh, we are going to keep uh, adding new strategies on our vaccination based on um, assessment on how we access the people. And it varies from one region to another. It is extremely important to even realize that Western Kenya, where we had quite a low uh, uh, uptake, the last 10 days, for example, in Kakamega, we have had over 100,000 vaccinations. 
And part of the reason is the old people trust to go to places of worship. And now we are partnering with churches and mosques. The elderly are coming there, and that's where they're getting vaccinated in Western Kenya. So we, we, we adapt our strategies uh, appropriately. Now let me start by saying what are we doing? We are working very closely with the county governments to first ensure that the vaccines are available, to ensure that we reach those that are eligible. We are scaling up our communication campaign. And during this festive season, we've actually been appealing to the private sector, including the media, so that we scale vaccination during this time, especially with Omicron now being with us, and with the uncertainty of what, how long it may be, or if any other variant is coming. So first and foremost, um, we are going to scale up communication for vaccination. For those who are vaccinated, as has been advised, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, but please ensure all the other measures are in place. But for the unvaccinated, the message is this. The measures that have been pronounced will be put, will be implemented. So if you want to have a safe Christmas and New Year, get vaccinated before you go where you are going because you may get stuck. You may not be able to board a vehicle back or you may not be able to enter the hotel you are going to because those measures will be implemented. So it is in your best interest to get vaccinated, first and foremost, and secondly, as we go to meet our elderly parents and other relatives, please ask them to get vaccinated before you even go there. So you get vaccinated and let them also be vaccinated. That is the only way we'll be talking of a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Otherwise, we will all come back here the first week of January and what we'll be having is admissions and hospital bills. So we continue appealing on the need of vaccination we appreciate that there is also data on waning vaccine protection. The Kenya National Immunization Technical Advisory Group met this Monday. They are finalizing the report, but I, I can just mention, yes, they are going to re recommend booster shots, and the specific guidelines will be given as we begin the new year. So that is uh, all I can say in terms of vaccination. It is, it, uh, first let me congratulate Kenyans. The last one month has seen very good uptake of the vaccine. The day before yesterday, we did a record 154,000 vaccinations on a single day. We had projected that that's what we'll be doing in December, so we have attained that. We know our target is 10 million, we are at 9.2. We believe if we all take the measures and the appeal we've, we've made today, we will hit the 10 million target. Thank you. There's no set date or timeline. The timeline is now, the moment we are in right now, where we are standing, this hour, this minute, this second. And it's important that we understand, and I keep emphasizing, the measures that are being put in place are to protect us all. In the past one week, we've received many phone calls from different leaders within the country, all of them concerned with the increasing cases of COVID-19. What we are saying is that as you go to that supermarket, you need to be protected, and you need to protect those who you will find there shopping who are vaccinated. As you go to that hotel for holiday, you need to protect the staff. We need to protect yourself and those who are also holidaying in that hotel. So the Ministry of Health, together with all the different um, designated mandatory um, officers of all the different institutions, are expected to ensure that these measures are adhered to. And we do emphasize that we are not saying vaccination is mandatory, but if you want the privilege of interacting with your community, get vaccinated. Thank you.